Hi guys. Um, so since I've been doing some of these videos, i um, started to get some questions come through. Um, we had a particularly interesting one this week that I think is probably valuable to, uh, to address for, for a number of you out there. Uh, and the question goes kind of like this, that um, John, I'm running a lot more frequently now and one of the things I've noticed is I'm, I'm starting to get terrible pain down the front of my shins. Um, and actually it's, it's getting so bad that I'm having to cut my run short, I'm starting to not be able to exercise in the same way and I'm, I'm not going to really get the results that I want. Um, you know, why is this happening and what can I do about it? Um, so what this particular person is experiencing is medial tibial stress syndrome uh, or shin splints. Um, probably shin splints are something you're more familiar with. And talking to this person, um, there's really two different reasons that shin splints come about. And it's either an overuse injury, quite simply, the person is either doing too much uh, or too much too soon, or just the sheer volume of what they're doing is too much, and the body's not able to hack it, it's not able to repair between training sessions, so the body's just breaking down. Um, the other reason it can be is actually the frequency is absolutely fine, um, the amount of training they're doing is, is fine, and the type of training they're doing is fine, but the actual way the body is um, performing when they do this exercise is not fine. So there's dysfunction within the body, perhaps the posture of the body isn't correct, uh, or the efficiency of the movement isn't correct. So the first is really easy to address. If it's an overuse injury and you're doing too much, you need to back it up, you need to have rest. Um, rest is almost as important uh, as anything else in terms of training, because if you don't give your time, or yourself time to recover, then you're not really going to get much out of your performance. The second is a lot more complicated, uh, and I'll address this here. Um, uh, probably it's going to be a fairly long video just because of how complex this is, so um, stick with me, but this really is for people who have shin splints and want to get this sorted, so uh, this is really for you guys. So the first thing is, when I run, I put roughly three times the body weight um, of myself through the actual structure. So that's a hell of a lot of weight, really, to go through the foot and ankle complex, through the shins, through the knees, the hips, and the whole body. So your first question might be, um, is my weight appropriate? So if you're carrying excess weight, weight that's you know not useful to you, that's going to make the situation worse. So getting lighter will, first of all, solve many of the problems. Um, second of all is going to be actually how you're distributing that load. So every time your foot makes an impact with the ground, there's ground reaction forces that go up through the whole body that your body has to deal with in order to propel itself forwards. Um, and how efficiently you deal with those ground reaction forces will determine how much impact goes through the joints, the, uh, the bones, the skeletal structure and uh, the muscles. So here's what I'd have you do. Um, you need to really look at, let's say for example, um, the foot and ankle complex to start off with. We'll start from the ground up and work up. How efficiently is your foot able to move forwards and back during running gait? Um, it's well documented that people with shin splints have a relatively poor dorsiflexion. So I'll show you how you can test for that and what that means. So hopefully you can see this bench, if I just move the camera down a little bit. Okay, so um, with my knee directly over my ankle, uh, with my foot roughly at 90 degrees, uh, dorsiflexion just basically means to bring the toes upwards, okay? So I should be able to do that by about 20 degrees, there or thereabouts. One easy way of testing that is to take something like a goniometer and place it level with the foot and the floor and to raise that foot up get the goniometer in line with the toe and uh, to basically read off the value. So I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see this here, um, but actually uh, way down here on the other side, about there, you can see that it's about 22 to 24 degrees, which is, is relatively normal. Now, just move that up a bit. Just simply for you to walk, you need to have about 15 degrees of dorsiflexion available to you. Um, just for efficient walking gait. When you run, it's going to be needing to be larger than that, approaching 20, because if you don't, 
you're almost running fairly uh, flat-footed, so you're not able to absorb the shock and carry the shock through the, uh, the muscular system. It kind of is more like you're just jamming that tibia bone directly into the floor, um, which, as it sounds, isn't great for, for the joints around the knee or the ankle or, the, in fact, the bone itself. So that's the first thing you can look at. The second thing is actually how much plantar flexion you have. And this is the opposite. So if I get this so you can see, so we, we established that dorsal flexion is to bring the toes backwards past 90 degrees. Uh, plantar flexion is actually pushing the toes forwards. People who have poor dorsal flexion usually have over excessive plantar flexion. And the reason for that is the back of the calf is very dominant and it allows those toes to be pushed forwards. It also means that the, the front of the calf complex or the lower complex uh, the anterior tibialis is weak. So something you could do to address this uh, would be to strengthen the anterior tibialis and stretch the back of the calf. So the back of the calf, I put some videos on here already to do with stretching the back so you can take a look at those. But for strengthening the front of the calf, it's really quite simple. Um, just simply to get that foot and try and pull the toes up towards your face, you'll feel the anterior tibialis here um, basically contract to pull the toes up. You can do that just with um, your own toes and hold it for two seconds and then relax and bring it up and hold it again. You can actually lift a small weight off the floor, maybe a couple of kilogram weights. Um, or you can even just maybe draw shapes with the toe, like uh, spelling out the alphabet. All these things will just improve the kind of strength and uh, flexibility you have around that foot and ankle complex. So that's the first thing that I would address. The second thing would be how much the foot actually rolls in when you run. So uh, how much you pronate the foot. So people who tend to get shin splints also tend to be over pronating when they run. And if you have a look at some of my videos where I talk about the overhead squat, you'll see that I talk about when knees move inwards. Um, so we'll see whether I can just demonstrate that here. Do this again. Okay. So when I squat, what can happen is my knees can come in, which causes the feet, which you should be able to see now, to roll inwards. That happens simply because the inside of the thigh, uh, the adductor, is quite tight and the outside of the thigh, the glute, is a little bit weak. So the second thing that I would look at is whether there is a dysfunction around the hip complex as well. So we'll probably do some more videos on that, um, just to cover that in a little bit more detail, but having a look at whether the knees knock in or go out would be useful. So I'm really just skimming over these parts. The next thing that would be useful to look at is actually the position of the hips when you run and whether you're using your abdominals. So finally, let's over here again. Um, the position of the hips is quite important. Usually people who have problems with their shins and shin splints tend to demonstrate an anterior pelvic tilt. So the front of the belt buckles pushed down, they have that backside sticking out and lower arch, uh, which is quite excessive. So as I run, I'm putting a hell of a lot more force through the front of my body um, than if I was able to sort of absorb the shock a little bit better and get some of the force going through my glutes, through my hamstrings and, and other such. So having a look at actually the alignment of the hips from the front, uh, what's happening with the ankles and the knees from here and the actual foot and ankle complex in this position. So those are all things that you can address. They're all things that can be measured and quantified with things like the, uh, the goniometer. Um, if you're unsure, uh, give me a call, uh, give me a shout, I'll start to look at these things and measure them for you and hopefully try and get you so that you're not using dysfunctional posture when you run and hopefully more efficient with translating those ground reaction forces up through the body without all the uh, pain that you're having in your shins. So hopefully that helps. Uh, there's loads of different things that you can do to manage the pain in the meantime. Uh, one thing that you might find particularly useful is just to take a, like a small plastic cup, fill it with water and freeze it. And once it's frozen, actually use 
that um, I suppose ice roll so just massage out the front of the shins and also give them rest they're, they're not going to get better if you don't rest them okay so stretches massage and rest hope that helps I'll catch you soon